Good morning and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining Innovice today for this webinar. My name is Luca Serena and I'm a technical sales engineer for Innovice based out of our office in Wallingford here in the United Kingdom. Today I'm going to present to you our ESRI integrated modeling platform for water supply system, which is called InfoWater. But before we start with the presentation, just a few notes for this webinar. Because of the people attending, you are all automatically on mute, but there is a Q&A panel on the right hand side of the screen where you can type any question at any moment. Mark Ellis is the support in the background for this webinar. He will be gathering together all the questions and we will provide a verbal answer at the end of the presentation, following up with more details on email following the webinar. This is InfoWater, and as I said before, is a GIS integrated modeling software for water supply system. It basically offers direct RGIS integration, enabling engineer and GIS professional to work simultaneously on the same integrated platform. So what you can see in front of you is the classic R map window. InfoWater runs an aroma extension of RGIS, providing additional toolbar which enable engineer to perform hydraulic analysis inside ArcGIS. Here is the Davis model. This is in the US, in California. And if we look at the project uh, information, we can see that there are a little bit more than 2000 pipes with 23 reservoirs and 23 pumps. So we're looking at, at, the, at a medium sized model and I'm going to present you for water using this model. If I zoom on a particular high of the network, we can select any element. And on the model explorer, we can see the information for the element that we have selected on the map. So for example, looking at this junction here, I, I can see that I have a demand of 0.84 liter per second, and I have a demand pattern for our residential area. Within the model explorer, we have also the ability to look at Google map link. So this will basically open the Google Street view and we can easily locate the element that we are looking on our, our map window. So for this junction here, we are in the middle of this street and we can see that there is a tank in here in the network. And if I go back to my network in the GIS, I can see that the, junction, the, the tank is in here. Another easy way to look at the information from our model outside RGS and outside InfoWater is by publishing all the network on the R and on the Google Earth. So I'm going to create a domain because I don't want to export all the network and I'm going to export just this selection of elements on Google Earth. So with the InfoWater drop down menu, we have the ability to, to publish to NetView to KML and with this one, we can select export domain only. And you can see here that we can also include the simulation result if you wish to. Just by clicking export, in Google Heart will automatically be launched. And uh, as soon as this is ready, it will zoom on the particular area of the Heart where our model is. So here is zooming in the US, in California, and we can now see how our model on Google Earth. So we can zoom in and look at the time that we were looking before on the street view. And from here, we can also select a model element and look at the information for the element that we are looking at. So the pipe, for example, we have not exported the simulation results, but if we had now, we will see also the simulation result. Now, I'm going to clear the domain and look at the entire network. And what I'm going to do first is to perform a run. So within the run manager, we have the ability to perform the hydraulic simulation. And you can see there is a green light here that shows that simulation runs successfully, but we can also have a yellow light which shows that the simulation runs, but there are some warning, and also a red light which shows that the simulation failed. And if this is the case, we can look at the message board here which provide any information for the reason of the pump of the simulation failure. Now that we have our simulation, we can start 
and looking at some of the results and I'm going to zoom on a particular area of the network. So again, I can select a pipe and I can look at the model explorer to look at some of the output during the simulation from here. So I can see now that the flow is 20.59 liter per second for this particular pipe, but we can also look at the graph. So for the entire simulation, what is the value of the flow, for example? And in this drop down menu here, we have the ability to look at different simulation results at loss, just to make an example. We have the ability to add additional information to this graph with this reference graph button. So with this quick, quick mix at graph option, we have the ability to look at more simulation results within the same graph. So in this example, we are looking at the flow with the blue line and the head loss with the green line. Within the report manager, we can assess as many types of simulation results and we can assess as a graph or as a tabular report. So I make sure that I select the simulation that I'm interested in. And for example, we can look at the AGL profile. So we simply select the pipe that we want to display the AGL profile on the map. And then we, we suddenly see the, the, the profile. We can modify some of the properties for the graph, for example, apply a custom scale that range between zero and 70. And once we have done this, we can play the simulation and see how the head change as we step through the simulation. Another example of a result that we can assess from the report manager is the pump curve. So again, I simply select the pump on the network and I see the pump curve and I can also see the operating point at the time that we are looking at, so zero, for example. And from here, we can play the simulation and see how what is the range on which the pump is operating in the network. Now, we have been looking at the simulation result for just a single element that we have selected on the map, but we may want to be able to look at more information simultaneously. And to do that, we can use this map display option. So for example, we want to look at the pipe, we want to look at the pipe in terms of flow. We can specify the first color, the last color, and with this ramp color option, it will automatically grade the color in between the, the, two, the two values that I, that I specified here. Same thing for the size. We can specify a number of breaks that we want, and once we have defined this, we can simply click, up, click on apply, and we can see now that our map is color based on the flow that there is on the pipe. And if we want, we can look at the table of the contents on the pipe shape file layer. We have the, what this color actually means in terms of flow. If we want then to create a more detailed view, we can also label the pipe and display the flow that there is at the particular time step that we are looking at. So for example, I'm going to define a new annotation and I want to display the pipe flow and I can apply a title. So Q is equal, and I want to show the units as well. So now you can see that on, on the network, every pipe is associated with a flow, so I can easily see what is the flow for, the, for all the pipe in the network. I'm going to reset the map display. Now, if we have SCADA data, we can also compare model results with real-time data. So for example, for this junction here, I want to look at the pressure. And always with this quick mix it with reference chart button, we can grab data from an external data source. And on this text file here, I have my observed data in terms of pressure. So now you can see that I have on the same graph side by side, what is the pressure that is simulated by the model and what is the pressure that is being measured out on the field. So this enable engineers to easily verify the model result. Another thing that we can do for viewing result is uh, creating a DB query. So for example, I have a query set here for the pressure zone and uh, these DB query are basically based on values in the project database, and they are all combined together in this query dataset. So for example, here I have the various pressure zones defined by different DB query, and we can color them with different color. So if I just right click and 
let's apply query set. I want to probably look at the entire network. I can see that all the pipes are colored based on the zone that they are, they are applied to. And all of this is dynamic. So it will dynamically adjust if the pipe zone change. So I'm going now to clear this result and moving on with the presentation. We can now take a look at some Fireflow results. So I'm not, I don't want to run the Fireflow simulation on the entire network. I'm again just going to create a domain with just this pipe and I want to run a Fireflow on this domain. So within the report manager, we have this Fireflow tab where we can specify to run the Fireflow on domain only. And here is where we type the pressure that we want to target. So 40 meters, for example. When I press run, it will run the Fireflow simulation for all the junction. And I can see here that I have the Fireflow demand, which is 32 liter per second for the junction. The residual pressure where we are pointing at this Fireflow demand. And this is the available flow that we would have where we one where we are pointing at this available pressure of 40 meter that we have specified before. If we want then to take a step further, we can run a design fire flow. And in this case, we are not looking at only at the residual pressure at the hydrant that we are going to operate, but we are also looking at if there are any critical junction with a pressure that drops below 32 meters. So, the, the report manager show a slightly different tab, tab now. We have our total demand, available flow, and it display also a critical junction, which is having some pressure, some problem in terms of pressure. And if we look at the design fire flow here, I can see that there is this, ju this junction that is under operating on my network. And I want to probably investigate the reason for that. So this junction 1502 is under operating. The best way to investigate this information is looking at the information on the map. And the easy way to, to do that is by creating a contour. So I'm going to define a new contour for the fire flow. I'm selecting the simulation and I want to display the design flow. So I can see that InfoWater will automatically create the contour. And if I zoom on this particular area of the network, I can see that this junk, this is the junction that is under operating, so it's limiting our system. And probably the reason is because we have this pipe that has a such such a smaller diameter, which may cause an issue if we should uh, have to operate this hydrant for fire flow analysis. Moving on, the scenario manager is a very quick, easy way to, man to manage different scenarios. So, for example, I'm just going to create a copy of my base scenario and I'm going to call this max day. I'm going to create another copy of my base scenario and I'm going to call this minimum day. Now, in this two child of the base scenario, I'm going to change the demand. So, because I want to change the demand only for the selected scenario, I'm going to define a new demand set just for the max day. So I'm going to clone the base demand set and I'm going to call max and apply it to this scenario. Same thing for the min. So close my base demand set and call this time min. So now, as long as I'm modifying the demand, it will modify just for this particular scenario and not for the base scenario. I'm going to activate it and if you look at the model explorer it, it clearly says that I am on the max day scenario. So within the DB editor we can access to all the uh, modeling parameter so if I just open the junction, the junction demand data tab I will have a list of all the junction with the demand. So I'm going to block edit this information in order to increase the demand. And the easy way to do that is by multiplying by a factor 1.2, for example. I'm going to save this and do the same things for the minimum day. But this time I'm going to multiply by a factor of 0.9 because I want to reduce the, the demand.
from the Scenario Explorer, we have then the ability to run a batch simulation and we simply select the scenario that we want to operate, to, to simulate and Infowater will automatically perform the tree simulation all together at the same time and then we will be able to look at the simulation results and compare the simulation results. So for example, selecting one pipe in the network, we can see that the flow for this pipe is this one in this scenario in here. Always from this reference graph button, we can grab data from another output source and here is where we select which source we want to display. So we are now on the minimum day, the blue line is the flow on the minimum day, the green line is the flow on the base scenario, and the red line is the flow on the max day scenario. We are looking at the flow, but we can easily change and look at the at loss, for example. So once we have our scenario, we have our model, we need to be able to bring in demands from our Missouri data, and we can do that with the demand allocator. So I'm, I'm going just to turn on this meter sale shape file and with the InfoWater, we can open the InfoWater allocator toolbar. With this meter assignment, we can see to which junction the meter has been assigned. So we simply select the junction that we want to display and this meter assignment window will automatically display to which junction the meter has been assigned. Now, in this case, in this example, this meter has been assigned to this junction because it's closer, but it may actually take water from this junction. So with the meter assignment junction, we can reassign a meter to the junction. We simply select the junction and the meter, and we can also review which are the meter that are assigned to a junction. Just reset the map display. Now, with the demand allocator, we have up to seven different methods to allocate the demands. If we are using a meter sale shape file, we can use a meter summation method. So we will provide a polygon for each junction and we are automatically uh, summing up all the demands imposed by the meter within the polygon and apply to the junction. Or we can easily apply the meter to the closest junction or to the closest pipe. But if we don't have a meter sale shapefile, we can use our polygon intersection or polygon extraction method, where we will basically have a demand by a polygon that is assigned to a junction, and we will use our land use shapefile or parcel shapefile, every shapefile which contains a usage data, and then we can provide this water duty per unit area, and it will automatically compute the volume, the area of commercial area, for example, in this demand area polygon and will allocate the demand to the junction. Once we have the demands, we probably want to make sure that our model is calibrated in terms of pipe roughness, for example, and, and this because the, the value of the roughness can vary by age of the pipe or by material of the pipe. To do that, we have a tool which is called Calibrator, and the Calibrator basically uses a genetic algorithm to run model simulation, model situation, that will automatically calibrate the pipe roughness to match the measurement. So with this roughness group, we have, our, we have different pipe groups, which are basically defined in reason of the age of the pipe, in reason of the material, or in region of the diameter of the pipe. Once we have set, up, set this up, we can start the genetic algorithm process and will comes out with the best value for the pipe roughness to match the observed data. So you can see here is where we have set our observed data. Here is our simulated data and we can look at the graph to look at how well our model is reproducing the observed data. And we can do that by uh, talking about junction pressure, talking about pipe flow, or talking about level on the tank. So I'm going now to switch back to the base scenario. I'm going to activate it and just running a standard hydraulic simulation, just to make sure that I'm looking at the right result set. And let's say that we have a uh, 
that we want to design a new subdivision. So I'm just going to zoom on a different part of the network and we may want to optimize the actual physical components this time, like the pipe diameter rather than the pipe roughness. And for doing that, we can use a tool which is called designer. So I'm just going to create a domain using the domain manager and I'm going to create the domain based on a selection set. So I have this subdivision area, which will create the domain of the new area that we want to design. So we can open the designer and what it does is basically using genetic algorithm another time, it come up with solution of pipe diameter of pump material or tank attributal attributes in order to meet given constraints. So in this example here, I am going to design just the pipe diameter for this area. Uh, this forced option is checked because we are going to place new pipe, which have a diameter that ranges between these two values and our cost based on this cost code in here. And I can see that this cost code correspond to new pipes and the pipes are more expensive uh, as the diameter is bigger. In this, we can then apply some constraints. So for the junction, we have a minimum pressure of 14 meters, a maximum pressure of 40 meters. And for the pipe, we can specify a maximum velocity or a maximum at loss. So 10 meter per thousand, for example. Once this is set up, we can start the optimization process and which if we run with different situation and it will come out with the three best, three better solution. Each one of those is associated with a cost. So there is a total cost that is uh, defined by the sum of the design cost. So the cost for placing new pipes in this case and the penalty cost. So every time that it doesn't meet a constraints, it will be transformed in a cost. And if we want, we can look at some of the detail of the simulation of the sort of the different solution. So within the solution one, the pipe are that are on group one will be pipe of for two oh three millimeters for a total length of this one and a roughness of this. Once we are happy with the solution, we can export that information and we can apply to a pipe set if we're going to design the pipe, to a pump set if we're going to design the pump or a tank set should we, go, should we uh, are going to be designing the tank. And again, I can use the scenario manager to create a design scenario, for example, and I'm going, I know that I'm going to design the pipes. So within the scenario explorer, I will define a new pipe set and I'm going to export this information just to the pipe set that I just created. So now that our model is set up, I'm going to show some of the search analysis that we can perform within Kubota. So if I just zoom to a different area, uh, we want to run a search analysis for this pump shut off and we are interested in looking at the result on this junction in here. So with the run manager, we have a search tab and we can simply start the search analysis and you can see that from the graph that we have some calibration. Now, the best way to look at the result of a search analysis is looking at, is looking at the profile of the pipe. So I just, I'm just going to create a domain for, for this pipe and a very useful tool is this network path where we basically can select the first junction, the last junction, and InfoWater will automatically create a domain with the, pi with the pipe that will connect these two junctions. So, so, so now within the report manager, we can select our search analysis and look at the head profile for the search. I just need to select the pipe in the domain. So in here, I can see what is the maximum head that is reached over the course of the simulation, the minimum head, and we can clearly see that there is there are some cavitation at the head at the time that, that we are pointing. So we can play the simulation and see where we have cavitation. And we also have this animation viewer where here is our pump, here is our junction, and we can play. And you can see the water gets colored on a different color when there is some cavitation. And in this situation, of course, um, there might be some problem in the network. So with InfoWater, we have the ability to simulate some 
suppressor search control device that has already been implemented on this network. So I'm just going to activate them. So you can see that I have some search tank. They are disabled for the simulation. So I'm going to block edit and activate all of them. So now if I try to rerun my search analysis, I will see that I don't, I don't have any cavitation from this graph. And if I try to look at the same profile, so I just need to refresh it. And I can see now that the cavitation problem are, are disappear. There is only an exception here. So if I play the simulation, again, I can see, or I can always look at the animation viewer to see how the situation is improved now. So we have some cavitation at the beginning, just right after the pump shut down, but the situation is much, much better than what it was before. Now, zooming out to the entire network, as I said at the beginning of this presentation, this is a quite small network, but most of the time our client use um, to work with very complex and big network. So within InfoWater, we have a tool which is called Skeletonizer, which will automatically reduce the size of the network, just removing some pipe, the smaller pipe, generally speaking, and this will automatically reallocate the demand as well. In this example here, I'm going to use a different tool, which is called Facility Manager. So we can use this tool to basically remove some part of the network and make them inactive for, for the simulation. So I have a DB query, which select the smaller pipe in the network. Just by clicking remove, it will automatically remove from the simulation some of the pipe. And I can see that they are gray out. The problem here is that some junctions are disconnected. So I'm just going to remove all the junction in the network, all are gray out, and then I can add only the connecting nodes. So now I have a working model, which is much, much smaller. So not in this time, but generally speaking, the simulation will take, will be faster. So I can see, you can see now that I have 100, 1,300 pipes, where if I'm going to reset the facility set that they've just defined and run the simulation again, I can see that there are 2,000 pipes now. Now the simulation run fast in both the situation, but with bigger network, this is going to be a very useful thing. So we have run our pipe search analysis and fixed it by activa activating the search control device. But now let's say that we don't have those elements in place and we ended up with a pipe break, for example. So we have some kind of leak in the network. So I'm just going to zoom on a specific area of the network and with the run manager, you can see that there is a break tab where we can select a pipe from our network. We can simulate the complete pipe raptor or just specify a size of the brick. So break, so 50 mil, for example. Once we have defined this, we can run the simulation. And if we now open the report manager, we can add a new graph selecting the pipe, the simulation that correspond to the break and look at the break graph. So we can see the break flow, the break volume, and the cumulative volume that is going out from our network. Now, this is all for the 1D, but if we want to define the flooded area because of this pipe break, we have a 2D capability with InfoWater 2D. So we can easily define a 2D area so the area from which we want to perform the 2D simulation and just give it a name. And as long as we have a, a, a ground model, we can mesh the 2D hour, uh, area based on the ground model that we have. So in this example, I have a vertical ward as a boundary condition. I have a maximum triangle area, and you can see that we can specify uh, terrain sensitive meshing as well just to reduce the, the size of the element when there are biggest slope. So now that I have my 2D uh, mesh, I can run the 2D simulation as well. And if this is easily done by checking this simulate water spill with 2 dimensional hydraulic modeling. So now the simulation eventually will take a little bit longer, 
but it shouldn't be that long. And once it's performed, we can start looking at the HD results. So this is my flooded area in terms of max depth, but we can always specify a map display. So set the number of classes and specify the first color and the last color, ramp them. And then we can investigate how the flood spread in the, in the, in the ground by stepping through the presentation. Now I'm going just to the, to close this 2D area and the 2D fun. And I'm going to turn this VAV layer on and I'm just going to be focused on a different part of the network. With InfoWater, we have a tool which is called Valve Criticality Model. And what it does is basically, if we have to take any valve offline, it will look at which other valves need to be closed in order to isolate it and how much of the system is going to be affected. So for example, how much demand is going to be lost because of that isolation. So in this first window here, it's just connecting to the right GIS layer, and then we can specify uh, as we are running the model, if we want to maintain pressure in this range, or if we want uh, to have our velocity constraints. Once we have the final of this, we can run the valve criticality model and we come up with a list of all the pipes. And for example, in order to isolate this valve, we are going to close one element, six junction and six pipe are going to be isolated and 1.27 liter per second of demand is going to be lost. Once we have selected a line, we can look at more detail to the nodes that are being isolated with the list of the nodes and we can also display on the map and same things for the valve, for the pipes. So in this example here, this is the valve that we wanted to isolate. This is the valve that we are going to close and these are the junction and the pipe that are going to be isolated. Now, zooming on a different area of the network, again, I'm just going to switch off this valve layer to show, to show you another tool, which is called the protector. And the protector is like a suite of water system operator tool which is used for managing the system in pre-crisis events. So for example, we have this contamination tab where we know that there are some water quality issues that are coming out, that are entering the system from this junction and it started hour five and the duration is three hour. We can run it, it and trace which are the other part of the network that are receiving the water from this junction. They are colored on a color for the affected facility. And if we have our property layer, for example, we can easily create a list of customer to notify. So these are the customer that are notified and we have the list of those and we can easily send a, a notification because they are having this problem. Now, because we have this junction that is providing some water quality issue, we may want to be able to isolate the junction. And in order to, that, to do that, we should have some valve on our network, but on this network, we don't have any valve. So what we have got here is the ability to create a domain with the closable pipes. So pipes that are a, a valve in it. And uh, uh, InfoWater will automatically run and create a list of the affected facility and a list of the closed facility in order to isolate this junction. So I'm just going to change the display and run it. So you can see here that these are the junction the, and the pipes that are affected by this isolation. These are the pipes that are isolated and I can always press notify to create a list of customer to notify. This break down tab is quite similar to the isolation tab, but the only difference is that on the isolation tab, we are going to isolate a junction. On this tab, we are going to isolate a pipe. And again, is creating a selection set for the affected facility. 
we, if we want, we can also evaluate uh, what would be the situation if we would have to run some fire flow simulation on with this area that is affected. With this event trace um, tab, we have the ability to select a junction. Let's say that we are having some water quality issue from this junction again, and we can trace to see where the water that is on this junction is coming from. So we have three sources and 83% of the water is coming from this source here in the network. We can then take a step farther and run us on the other way around. So uh, because we are having problem on this junction of water quality, most of the water is coming from this source. And these are all the customers that are receiving water from this source. So they may have some water quality issue as well. And again, last time, we can create a list of customers to notify. Now I'm going to zoom on a different part of the network and to show you that if we had to plan some flushing operation, InfoWater provides a very useful tool which is called InfoWater UDF. Within the InfoWater UDF we have a flush zone manager which defines the zone that we are going to flush. Within this zone we can specify a minimum flush velocity, a minimum residual pressure at the hydrant that we are going to operate, a minimum system pressure within the present zone and a minimum share stress. I'm going just to reset this one. Once we have defined the flush zone, we can start with the flush sequence manager. So define the different sequences for the pipe that we need to flush. So we have the selection of the pipe that we are going to flush. Within the operation, we have the list of the pipe that we are going to close and the hydrant that we are going to operate. And you can see that on my network, I don't have any hydrant, I don't have any buzz, so I can just turn this then on. They are just GIS layer. So I don't need this element to be in the model because we have the ability to grab that information from an external shapefile. So for example, for the hydrants, I have my fire hydrants. I just need to provide a unique identifier. Same things for the valve, hydrant valves and unique identifier. So now the valve and the hydrant are registered, are within my model. We have the ability to auto automatically associate the hydrants within a certain distance. And we have also the ability to auto associate the valve, uh, sorry, to auto associate the pass. And we are going to do this just because we are using an external shapefile. Once we have done this, we can run our sequence it will step through every single sequence that we have defined, and then we will be able to assess to the simulation result. So if we look at the parameter, we can see that there is a minimum flashing time, a desired flashing time. The desired and minimum flashing time are generated based on the number of turnover. So here I don't have a turnover, so total flashing time. We have the results for the pipes, so velocity in liter per second, flow in liter per second, shear stress, and critical junction. So should I have any critical junction with a pressure that is below the minimum pressure that I specify on the flash zone manager, that they will be displayed in here. And then we can easily look at the result within the map. So on the sequence one, we're going to isolate, on the sequence two, we're going to operate this valve, and I have a UDF operation valve and hydrant which show the valve that are open and the valve that are closed. The hydrant that is operated, you can see that is colored by green. And we can step through the sequences and see and look at the simulation result. Within the InfoWater UDF, we have also the ability to um, print a field journal which contains the list of all the sequences that we have defined. And this can be used by the flushing team out on the field to, to operate the system. So this was just a, a rapid overview, a quick overview of the main capability of InfoWater. InfoWater is a software that is very rich of capability, so it's quite hard to explain all of the, those 
together on the same presentation. Should you have any question, please write to Mark and we will provide an answer or just write me an email at luca.serena at innovize.com and I will be more than happy to set up a specific WebEx with you to show you the main capability. Thank you.